What a dumb way to park a bobcat. Okay. The reason why is because my tilt and lift has quit me. This is an 863G and I have a hydraulic fault on it on a solenoid. I'll show you how I fixed it on mine. It might help you with yours. It might not, but it might. Okay. Okay, in addition to not being able to lift or tilt my bucket, I have a flashing light on the control panel that says the lift and tilt valve is having a problem. That shouldn't be flashing. So if I go over to the other side and take a look at this control panel, go to the diagnostic tool, look at the active warnings. It says I've got a hydraulic lock valve open circuit. So I got a broken wire somewhere. First thing you got to do is lift the cab. That's a whole bunch of fun. Once the cab's up, you have access to the hydraulics under the seat. All right, once you got into the hydraulic compartment underneath your cab and underneath your seat, this is the throttle. That's your hydraulic release to let the bucket down and all that stuff. You're going to find right behind those things your main valve body. Now the main valve body, right about in the middle of it, you're going to find this plug hole here. Follow that down here. And you're going to find the solenoid. You're going to find the solenoid that you're looking for. That's this right here. It's got a little cap nut on the end of it. And it sits on a spindle. Now I've had this one out and cleaned it off so it makes it easier to see. But it's got two wires underneath it that you can see if you look real close. There's a wire harness that runs underneath it and I've got that disconnected. You can take the cap nut off of that with a three quarter inch box wrench or a socket. And I'll do that real quick and then I'll show you how to get that thing out of there. Okay, the cap nut's off of it. That's it right here. You can take a pry bar and get it down between that solenoid and the body and just work this thing off. It just wants to pry off of there. Once you pry it off a little bit, you get a hand on it and just give it a couple of twists and it'll, it'll come right out of there. Hard to show anything while I'm doing this, but there it is. Leave that spindle in place. You wind up with this and you see my broken wire right there and it was unplugged already from the bottom. All it is is a magnet solenoid. So throw this thing away, replace it. Um, the one that I'm replacing it with, I picked up from the Bobcat dealer, uh, from their parts desk, and uh, it cost me 65 bucks. If I had had time to order it online and fart around and wait for it and all that, you can get them for 20, 30 dollars. Uh, at any rate, make sure you got the one with the right plug-in for your machine when you buy it. And you just put it back in the same way this one came out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so here's the new part. There's a magnet end and an end with a washer. The end with the washer is the one that's going to go to the outboard side so your cap nut will go up against that. I'm going to put this in. Okay, so there's the new part installed with the cap nut on it. Now there is an O-ring on each end of that. One's on the cap nut and one goes on the spindle. Uh, so try to keep those O-rings intact to keep oil and crap out of that magnet. Uh, let's go ahead and drop the cab and see what we got going on here. All right, back in the cab. Back in the cab, we got her turned on. 
That light is no longer flashing. Looks like I'm probably all right. Start the machine. And I'm back in business. Very nice. All right, now I don't know if this will fix your machine like it fixed mine, but if you can save yourself a couple of bucks and if this works for you, if you're having the same symptoms that I was having and it works for you, then fantastic. Uh, have a great day.